Hello and welcome to a very interesting video. This video is a continuation of my last one and in the last one I, sh I told you a little bit about capacitor leakage uh, because I recently acquired this capacitor leakage checker right here. It's more than just it can also measure capacitance and this thing has a lot of leaky capacitors in it so I have to replace them. And I already showed you what leakage means and how it ca could be measured. Um, but now the next thing is I have to replace all of these capacitors in here because they are also leaky and they have this line on them which you can see here so one side of them is marked and in the last video I told you that I will tell you more in the next part and this is not the next part so I will do that right now so this line means that this side of the capacitor is the side where the outer foil of the capacitor is. So since these are film capacitors, they have an outer foil and this is where it is connected. So it's connected to this lead right here. There is the outer foil connected. So actually this means that this lead is connected to the shield of the capacitor, so to speak, and the other one not. So this one shields the capacitor. And why is this important? So these capacitors are not polarized like electrolytic. So this is not, this doesn't mean that this is minus and this is plus. This just means that this here is connected to the shield. And the thing is, um, depending on the circuit, it could be important that you insert new capacitors in the same way. Because tube circuits are high impedance stuff. These are high impedance tubes, are high impedance devices and most of the time there are high resistor values used and therefore they are susceptible to uh, external uh, EMI, to, to external um, signals like the, like the power grid, the 50 hertz or any other interference or maybe something could couple into a wire and do some strange stuff which you, which you don't like. And first of all, let me explain you in a simple way what this actually means, this high impedance thing and why it means that it is more susceptible to interference than uh, a low impedance stuff, for example. So first of all, uh, what does impedance actually mean? Impedance is like um, resistance, but for AC. So for example, a capacitor has a certain resistance for a certain frequency and for a certain impedance. But uh, now for this explanation, uh, let's just consider impedance and resistance as the same thing because for this explanation it can be. So here I have two resistors. Uh, one resistor has 220 kilo ohms, so this is a high resistance or high impedance value. And here I have a resistor which has um, one kilo ohm, so this is a lower resistance value. Okay, and what I will do now, I will uh, show you a little bit on the oscilloscope. Okay, so here I have my oscilloscope because no scope, no fun. And now let me do the following setup. I will use this here as oscilloscope probe, okay? Um, and I will connect this thing to uh, this connector here because this now allows me to directly connect it to the, to the BNC connector of my oscilloscope. So it's like having a 1x probe but with shorter leads. Uh, or actually directly connected to my oscilloscope and what I will do now is uh, I will connect uh, the resistor with the high resistance value and now let me touch one lead of the resistor and actually the lead which is connected to the plus of the oscilloscope not to the, uh, to the ground to the signal of the oscilloscope okay so now I touch this and you can see we have huge interference here and if I I touch the uh, the lamp with my other hand, then it gets it gets extremely huge. Okay, um, so what we we are seeing here is the is the 50 hertz from the power grid, and there is also a lot of other stuff going on here, which might be caused by some switch mode converters or similar stuff. But we have a lot of interference going on. Okay, so this is was the high impedance, the 220 k ohms, and now. Let me use the low impedance resistor. Now we have 1k ohm on here. Okay, this is 1k ohm and now I touch the lead. And there is almost nothing. It's, bare, bare, it's, it's very, very low. And if I, uh, if I still if I touch the lamp again, it's still very low. So we have almost no measurable interference 
in this range. Of course, if I increase the range, then we will see a little bit, but it is very low. Okay, so this makes it very clear that the uh, interference, which is received by this 1K resistor, is much less than the interference received by this 220K ohm resistor. But why is this actually so? The reason is pretty simple. So by touching this one lead here, um, I inject a interference with a little bit of power actually is not so much but if the resistance value is quite low then it draws a high current and it loads everything which is connected to this point uh, pretty pretty much so it's like if you have a, a motor which has a, a high power if you have a motor with high power then it has a low resistance uh, it, it uses a lot of energy from a battery or whatever so this is the same here and I don't have so much energy here in my hand or with the interference, it does not have so much energy. So it's loading down the interference a lot and therefore there is not much voltage output and you can see there is no, almost nothing there. But on the other hand, if I, if I use the resistor with the high impedance, then there is not much load on the interference, there is not much current and therefore I will see a lot of interference on the oscilloscope screen. So I hope this point is now clear that if you have a low impedance, you have low interference and if you have a high impedance, you have high interference. And uh, this brings us back to the point of uh, this capacitor interference thing. So let me show you a very simple example. Uh, for example, if I have a cap capacitor connected to ground and to the other side I have a resistor and maybe some amplifier stage this could be the output resistance of the amplifier stage a resistor that is deliberately placed here uh, but uh, the point is um, uh, by the way actually this is a low pass filter because low frequencies can pass and high frequencies will be shorted out by this but anyway and the next stage is uh, again an amplifier stage for example and this amplifier stage has a high input resistance. So if this is the input resistance of the stage, um, then I call it, I call this R I, and uh, R I um, is very high. And also this resistor, I just call it R O. Uh, yeah, just call it R O. And this is also very high. Okay, this means that on this point here we have a very high impedance point because it's not loaded much so this could be for example our 220k ohm resistor which we had before 220k ohm resistor all right so as we know before that if we were touching this point then we got, we got a lot of interference okay so now we have a capacitor which has a shield or an outer foil um, on one side so basically i can I just draw this shield around so it's like it is in a box okay and now what would happen let's first of all imagine that the shield is connected to this side here uh, to the capacitor so the whole body of the capacitor so to speak is now connected to this point to this point here where we have a high impedance at this point okay so um, since the capacitor is connecting this way and the the whole body of the capacitor is exposed and has this shielding here we have a huge area at which um, interference could couple in because it could couple in from the leads of course but it can also couple in by if I touch the capacitor for example or if there's a nearby wire which uh, which has interference or something else then this capacitor can couple in interference in your circuit okay but what if we connect it the other way around what if we connect the shield of the capacitor to this point here so let's connect this shield here to this point what this now means the wire here is still exposed but the whole capacitor itself is shielded all right so the whole capacitor is shielded it's grounded so actually this side of the capacitor which has the shield in it is tied to a low impedance point because the ground is a low impedance point, there is no resistance in series of here, here, right? This is tied direct, directly to ground, so we have actually we have zero ohms to ground. On this side we have 220 ohms and something here ohms, but 
this is directly tied to ground okay so we have a very low impedance on this side so any um any interference caused by touching it or by wires uh, around it or any anything else will be shorted to ground so the only point where interference can be injected here is is this junction here so it's this short wire and this wire and maybe this wire so if we connect the capacitor in this way then interference will be reduced a lot okay and the thing is uh, if, if you're designing something like this you want uh, your capacitor being placed in the right direction so that the shielded side is at the side where the impedance is lower so always where the impedance is lower it does not have to be ground but always on the side where the impedance is lower okay so that said uh, if I now replace a capacitor in my Heathkit, um, Heathkit capacitor tester then I have to be sure that I put the outer foil to the side with the lower impedance and therefore I just put the outer foil uh, of the new capacitor where the outer foil of the old capacitor was so basically how to do that so um, if I look back to the, to the Heathkit I don't need a schematic or so for, for seeing this because the uh, outer foil side is marked already so this is fine but now how to find the outer foil of such a capacitor for example or um, how to find the outer foil of a capacitor like this one here it's also not marked how can this be done um, I already did it before I did it um, with this capacitor uh, sorry with this capacitor and as you can see I've marked one side but now I will show you how I did it and actually it's extremely simple um, so let's find the outer foil of that capacitor here it will be very exciting let's get right into it okay here I'm back at the oscilloscope because again no scope no fun um, this here is now the, the test resistor I don't need this and now for this setup what you need is just the capacitor you you'd like to test and you need a 1x probe um, for me 1x always work better than a, a 10x probe so no attenuation or just something like this where you can directly connect your capacitor to the oscilloscope okay and now I connect the capacitor just to the oscilloscope in a random direction because I don't know where the outer foil is and what I will do now is I will touch the body of the capacitor so I will touch the outer foil side of the capacitor uh, with my hand and then I will try to touch a lamp or something nearby to, to, uh, to get interference coupled into the capacitor and as you can see there's nothing happening but I have to increase uh, the resolution of course so that I get something I get a little bit okay and this is not really much as you can see now we are in the 2 millivolt range and we are not getting a lot okay um, in this case I can also turn on the bandwidth limitation so if your oscilloscope has something like a bandwidth limitation you can turn it on because most of the interference now will be 50 Hertz so it's maybe a bit easier to see so that it is filtered only for lower frequencies in this case it's it, the cutoff is 20 uh, megahertz I think so just to remove a bit of the high frequency content but still I don't see much okay so what I will do next is I will reverse the capacitor now the oscilloscope is going crazy and what do you see it's much more now I've reversed the polarity of the capacitor and it is much more okay so what does this mean if if which side is now the outer foil of the capacitor um, at this direction where it is right now the interference is much more than I had before so this means that the plus now must be on the outer foil because by touching the capacitor I couple in the interference uh, by touching it that this way and then it goes into the lead here and it goes into the plus don't touch the leads don't uh, uh, distract it just touch the body of the capacitor and here it can you see it's much more because now I'm directly injecting the signal into the capacitor let me let me uh, turn it around again and you can see now it's much lower because now the 
outer foil of the capacitor is grounded and therefore we don't see much because now my interference is grounded and this is actually the setup where it should be. So now since this is low I can mark this side here with uh, this side here being the outer foil. So this is the outer foil side right now. Okay, so let me show you another capacitor. Now let's try this one here because it will work the same. Okay, so now I've connected it in this way and now I touch it and I already have a pretty huge signal. Okay, let me turn it around. Signal is even more, even bigger. Okay, so since the signal here is now even bigger than before. Yeah, it is. Now let me turn it around again. Okay, and now it's smaller. So this is the right way how to connect it. So now I found the outer foil side. The outer foil is this side of the capacitor where, where how it is connected right now because the interference is smaller. So I can mark this side being the outer foil. All right. And this is the way how this is how you can measure all your capacitors and replace them correctly in your devices. And now you know how to get the outer foil of uh, such capacitors and why it is important to get the outer foil side. So I hope this video was interesting for you and I hope you have learned a thing or two and I can just say thanks for watching and bye.